We'll go to Jenny Streeter from the battalion. Hi, Connor. This is Jennifer from, the, sorry, right here. Yeah. This is Jennifer from the battalion. Um, you know, each 12th man has kind of contributed something different to this le legacy. A clear example would be Colin Gillespie. How do you hope to kind of build off of the legacy that's already been established, and how do you hope to also contribute your own legacy? Yeah, um, I've been lucky enough to be around two 12th men with Braden last year, and uh, I was here for Colin for one year, my first year here. So, you know, they were both different people, and – uh, when I got named 12th man, I called Braden and he told me to be like just myself. Like, I don't have to be Colin, I don't have to be Braden. So that kind of made me feel better inside. I was like kind of calm about it. So, um, something I want to be different about is like I'm a specialist. So, like, never really had that as a 12th man, as a long snapper. So, just kind of bring, you know, fun, you know, energy that, you know, Colin had and kind of take different parts from 12th men before and kind of, you know, make it my own. Okay, we'll go out right in front to Brent Zornerman from the Chronicle. So at point, one point when you're a little kid, do you start snapping with the idea that, hey, I can might do this for a long time? What went through that as well? So I started snapping my sophomore year in high school, and uh, I realized I wasn't going to play on varsity at anything else. Uh, wasn't big enough, fast enough, or anything like that. So I went up to my head coach. I was like, hey, like I just want to be long snapper. And like his, his face was like, and he was like, that's all you want to do? I was like, yeah. And so he was kind of like shocked by it because he'd never really had anyone, you know, come to him and say, hey, I just want to be long snapper. Like usually he has people come to him and say, hey, like I want to be the starting quarterback. So I just said, hey, I just want to be long snapper. And so it kind of just took off from there. I realized that that was my best, best, best chance to get on the field. So. It wasn't a case where you were five years old and your parents said, okay, this is how you can do this? Because I've seen that before with snappers. It wasn't that at all. No, no. Uh, my parents just kind of realized that I would learn by myself, you know, what, what the deal was going to be. I wasn't going to be a receiver or running back. So long snapper was, was my way. We're going to stay in front. We'll go to Travis Brown from the Eagle and then Colt. Yeah, what was the uh, the experience like getting to, to when, when when you were named when coach told you uh, what was kind of going through your, your mind in that time and, and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean it was super, you know, like breathtaking. I wasn't even expecting to be named 12th man. Honestly, I was getting ready to cheer for you know whoever else was going to be named it. So I was like getting on the edge of my seat, getting ready, and then he said Connor Cho, and I like, like whoa, <laughs> sat back in my chair. I was like wow. Did like you know it still feels surreal at times when I see it in my locker. It's just like number twelve in my in my locker on my pad, still going you know to like practice or right before the game. It's still kind of like wow, this is for real. So still getting used to it, but it's a great honor, and I'm just very blessed to be able to be twelve. And when you uh, when you pull up your bio, it, usually you can see football and some other sports, but football and lacrosse is kind of an interesting pairing in Texas. How'd you get involved with that and? How, how does that help you, that background help you at all in, in what you do now? Yeah, uh, so my brother played lacrosse. Uh, so growing up, me and him would always play lacrosse together. So I started playing that in third grade. And then uh, I think it made me like a better athlete because I would play football in the fall and then lacrosse in the spring. And so how we become a better athlete, and I think that's what kind of separated me coming out of high school. I wasn't you know, the biggest one, but I could definitely get down and cover, and, you know, I think it made me a better athlete. Let's go over here to the far right, Nicole. Connor, I just want to get your thoughts on social media, you know, how big the social media background is here in Texas A&M. How has the outcome and the, the pour back from the 12-man fan base been for you and your family, and more so, how has it helped your confidence this year? Yeah, uh, you know, when I got named it, um, Twitter was going crazy, Instagram was going crazy, it was tough to keep up with all of that. I tried to get back with as many people as I could, but yeah, the 12th man was amazing. All I got a bunch of, you know, messages and follows and tweets at me just saying like, you know, we're with you, we're supporting you. So uh, it was it was definitely overwhelming, but it made me feel like, you know, I had a bunch of support in the back of me, you know, and everything I do. And so, uh, you know, social media can be used for good or bad, but I think, um, you know, not putting too much value into it, you know, good or bad, you know, not swinging you one way or the other. But it's definitely nice to see the way uh, A&M fans, you know, were reacting to me. Let's go left side middle to Kay from the battalion and then Chuck. Hi, Connor. Uh, Kay with the battalion, two questions for you. So as a 12th man, obviously, like a lot of young Aggies 
um, really love the 12th man, and it definitely sets an example for them. Um, so how can you say that you will be able to set an example for, like, little kids um, that look up to you? Yeah, like, uh, first thing I would say is, like, you know, looking at me, like, I don't really look like a football player. So, I mean, anything's really possible at this point if I'm being 12th man. So uh, I think it just shows that, you know, you can really do anything you want if you put your mind to it. You know, you don't have to be the biggest, strongest, or fastest. So starting with that, I would say, you know, hopefully I could be a role model. Like, hey, like, if he can do it, then, you know, definitely I can do something like that. So. And then secondly, so obviously in the Colorado game, what was Coach Fisher like um, in the locker room being down 7-3 to three against an unranked team? Um, and how did you kind of see that influence the team's drive to finish the game? Yeah, I mean, he wasn't screaming or anything. He just came in and was like, hey, you know, we need to find our identity. You know, we need to come together. Like, we knew we were going to get their best punch. You know, it wasn't our best half. But, you know, we need to come together right now and really try to find out, you know, what this team's about. And I think we all saw it in the second half, how we prevailed through, through it at the end. Stay on the left side to Chuck Carlton from the Dallas Morning News. In terms of being a deep snapper, I was just curious, is it just muscle memory and repetition, or is there more that goes into it than just those things? Yeah, it, it mainly, like, because you're doing the same motion every week. You know, you don't have to plan for, you know, different game plan or whatever. Like, you're going to have the same, you know, 14-yard snap for punts. You're going to have the same 7.5-yard snap for field goals. So I think that's – you find a lot of comfort in that. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know – drawing up different plays to succeed you know you're doing the same thing but at the same time you know you can get bored with that so it's kind of just being comfortable in in uh you know the repetition and the muscle memory and you know doing the the perfect repetition for practice each time which leads to success out there let's go behind the lights to tv row to mike from kx then cease <clears throat> connor i know it wasn't the uh the prettiest one on saturday but do you think some previous A&M teams would have been able to respond the way you guys didn't come out of there with a win, or is this kind of a special group that was able to overcome all that adversity? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it goes back to, like, the leadership and, like, the games that this team's been in, uh, like going back to Florida and stuff, come, come behind, you know, and even in the Orange Bowl, you know, come from behind. So I think all those games have helped us, you know, get to this point where, you know, if we get behind in a game, you know, it's – or, you know, the momentum swings in one way or the other. You know, we're not panicking. We're not freaking out. You know, it's getting back to, you know, hey, we've been here before. Like, so, and I think that speaks to our leadership on this team on, on all three phases. Let's go to your far left. You Robert Cessna. So when's the last time you made a tackle and talked to us about your tackling skills? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, depends on what you count as a tackle. I... I, I, I count as like a hand touching him, you know, down in him. So I've definitely gotten in the mix, but no solo tackles for me so far. But I'll leave that to, you know, Chris Russell or. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like, I had a few, you know, nothing crazy or anything, but, you know, some leg, leg grabs and stuff here and there. <laughs> all right. I think that's all the questions we have for you. Right. Thanks, Connor. Oh. oh, behind the lights to Tyler from KBTX. So Connor, uh, I just wanted to ask you, talked about, you know, you, you're bringing your own energy. How important is that going to be on Saturday with uh, an early kickoff at 11? Yeah, uh, luckily I've been here, so I know how those 11 a.m. kickoffs can get. Um, I remember Florida was an 11 a.m. kickoff, so it's really just kind of, you know, getting the right amount of sleep before and, you know, kind of just bringing your own juice no matter who you're playing. And it kind of just gets down to, you know, it doesn't matter who we play, you know, we're, we're lucky to go out there. You know, with the pack stands with Kyle Field, you know, we took it for granted in 2019 and realized how much importance it is, uh, you know, going back to the Kansas State game. So we'll be fired up 11 a.m. All right. That covers it. Thanks.